Hey guys and thanks for tuning in. Have you ever tried to get an authentic analog and vintage sound out of your digital audio workstation? Today I'm going to show you how you can treat your music with some instant analog magic without using plugins but using this, a tape machine. Music has been recorded and listened to on tape from the 1930s to the early 80s before digital production and CDs took over. Still, nowadays more and more studios go back to tape or have at least a bunch of tape emulating plugins on hand because of that special sound. Here I have my Akai 4000DS, a quarter inch consumer model from the late 70s that I picked up from eBay for less than 100 bucks. It's obviously not a pro model like the huge 24 track machines you would have seen in big studios, but for serving us with some concise vintage color in your digital audio, it's the perfect piece of gear. So let's see how to hook this thing up so we can address it from our DAW. You'll need a recording interface with at least two inputs and four outputs, so you can send out audio on two outputs and listen back on the other two while recording on two inputs. In addition to that, you'll need some software that lets you route your audio to the different outputs and inputs, of course. I'm using a PreSonus 8-in, 8-out Firewire interface along with Ableton Live, but any other interface or software that fits the specs that I've just mentioned will do the job. In my case, output 7 and 8 of my interface go to the inputs of the tape machine and input 7 and 8 pick up the audio returning from it. To check my levels, I put an oscillator on the track that's going out to the tape and a stereoscope on the return track. I set the machine in record mode and flick on the tape monitor switch. Now I adjust the gain knobs until I have a somewhat centered stereo image. I might repeat this process later on when recording different instruments. You can already see and hear the tape doing some modulation, comparing it to the original signal. Now that the machine is all dialed in, let's record some music that we can give some special vintage treat later on. Now that I've recorded everything for this tune, I will send out every single instrument to tape and record it back. I will turn off any effects but cabinet simulations and add an EQ that pushes some high frequencies. I know the tape will bring down the high end by a bit, so I want to take care of that beforehand so I don't increase any noise when pushing the highs later on. The tape begins to do its magic when you hit it harder than the 0 dB on the VU meters. There's a sweet spot between a good amount of compression and saturation before it's turning into a pile of analog mud. There will be a good amount of latency on the recorded channel due to the gap between the record and the playhead which the tape has to travel. You can measure this latency by delaying the original signal until you hear them both phasing. If you would just record some stamps to tape, you would have to delay the non-tape stamps by that amount to get everything back in sync. I've bounced all the tracks and mixed a tape and a non-tape version using the same pannings and effects. Here's a blind test, naming one A and the other one B. Could you tell which one was which? Well, A was the tape and B was the no tape version. It's hard to describe what happened to the sound, but if I try to break it down, I would say there is an addition of compression and saturation along with a slight variation in time which affects pitch and frequency as well. This is what often is called wow and flutter. As I've mentioned before, the tape also rolls off the high end and does the same thing to the low end. Just out of curiosity, I sat down the other day and tried to use some effects from Ableton along with Max for Life to create an emulation of my Akai tape machine. I measured the frequency response of the tape and rebuilt that with an EQ and tried to emulate all the other modulations as well. Let me show you a blind test with the real tape versus my tape plugin on the original segments. Could you 
tell? A was my plugin and B was the real tape. If you are an enabled user and you want to use my plugin, you can get that on my Patreon page. I will put a link to that down in the description. I hope this video encourages you to get your hands on the tape machine and start experimenting with it. Even though it's a bit more time consuming than working with plugins, it will give you a really authentic sound color whenever you're going for that vintage vibe. It implements some kind of imperfection that in my opinion adds value to your sound. Well thank you so much for watching this and if you liked this video, please hit the like button. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments, I'll be hanging out down there. I will be posting more videos on music and audio production in the future, so if you don't want to miss out, please subscribe to this channel and I'll see you soon.